Okay, I thought this would be an interesting video. Um, there's a fairly new function called RandArray. And uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that show how to uh, calculate uh, calculate pi using the Monte Carlo method. And I just figured I'd do it again using the RandArray. I didn't. I don't think I saw any that used RandArray to, to do it. It's, like I say, it's a near, fairly new function. So the way you do, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to first start with a circle with a radius of 1 and that circle is going to be placed inside of a square with a side length of 2. And I want to estimate pi using the Monte Carlo method and the Rand array function in Excel. So um, if we draw out what's going on, we have a circle with a radius 1 and a side length of, of uh, 2 in the square and if you calculate the area of the circle, and th there is a reason that we uh, use the radius of 1, because the area of a circle is pi r squared, of course. Pi times 1 squared is pi times 1, and pi time, 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times pi is pi. So now we have the area of circles pi. And of course, the area of a square is the side squared, right? So it's going to be 2 times 2, so the area of the square is 4. So that means that the, the ratio of the area of the circle over the area of the square is equal to pi over 4. Or we could say that pi is equal 4 times the area of the circle over the area of the square. Okay, So it's 4 times the ratio of this area divided by this area. Now, the what we, Monte Carlo methodology is what we're, we're going to do is we're going to throw a bunch of dots within the square and then count the dots that are within the square. The total dots, that would be the area, total number of hits within the square would be an approximation of the area of the square. And the total hits within the circle would be approximation of the area of the circle. Once we count how many times uh, uh, we have in those two areas, then I could get that ratio and take it times 4, and that should be a good estimate, estimate of pi. So um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate, we're going to make an array. And I'm going to now I'm going to use this rand array function up here. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go equals rand array, and ask for the row. So how many... Uh, that means how many times do we want to throw that dart within this square? And I'll say, let's say we want to do it 10,000 times. And we want to do two columns because I want X and Y. This, this is going to spill. It's a spill function. So it's going to have 10,000 rows and two columns. And then the first thing is I want the minimum is I want a minus 1. And the, and the maximum I said I want 1. So in other words, I'm going to say this is 0. And it can be all the way to a minus 1 here and a plus 1 there. Okay. Well, and then also Y it could be plus. Remember, this is X and Y. So X, X is going to be from a minus 1 to a 1 and Y is going to be from minus 1. So this is an XY coordinate. If this is 0, it can go from here to here. I can go from here to here. So we're going all the way from that corner to that corner to that corner to that corner. All right. And then I'm going to close the parentheses and hit enter and it'll fill it out. So now we have... A bunch of different random numbers between 0 and 1, minus 1 and 1 for both the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Now, every time I hit F9, it recalculates it. It forces it to recalculate. All right. So, how do we know? Let's let's go ahead and graph this real quick. So, I'm going to go shift and down. I'm going to go insert. I'm going to insert a scatter chart. Okay, let me, let me cut this and... Put it up to the top. We don't need it down here in the bottom. Let me just put it right. Uh, let's put it right here for now. And I'm going to get rid of the title. We know what this is. And let me uh, make it approximately square because it is a square, right? So we'll make these little squares in here approximately square. And let's uh, make it a little bit smaller so we can see it. Maybe I could. Oh, 
Okay, so that's approximately square. And I hit every hit up every time I hit F9, it has different dots. Now we can't see those dots very good, so let me let me uh, right click on here. I'm gonna go format data series, and for the markers, uh, marker options, I'm gonna make it a, a lot smaller dot. That'll work. And then for the border, we'll take the, that's okay. We make the border smaller too. So you can kind of see the dot a little bit better. So those are dots. So now I hit F9 every time. So every time I hit F9, we're going to see dots in a different spot. Okay. But we're basically filling on those dots are real tiny. How can I make those a little bit smaller? Let me see. Uh, I get them any smaller than that. Oh, yeah, zero. Sorry, let me just. Seems like it still seems kind of small. Oh, it still doesn't that to zero. Oh, I see what it's doing. It's just changing one. Let me try it again. Sorry, sometimes it just changes one. That's not what we want. I want to change all of them. There and the border. Let's make a really transparent border so we don't see it. There, now I can see those dots a little bit better. So if we hit F9, you can see them. All right, so that's a, so we know we've got our square now. So now we want to figure out which one of those dots fall within the circle. So we can use Pythagorean's theorem here, right? We could use, uh, we could take uh, x squared plus y squared, take the square root of it. So I go equal square root of this squared plus this squared. And if I copy that down by double clicking here, so it checks. So we know if this is what, greater than one, it's it's going to fall outside of the circle, right? It's going to fall outside in this area. If it's less than one, because we're getting the hypotenuse, right? Which is going to be this radius, right? So if that radius is greater than one, it's, it's falling out here in this corner. So in this case, so we could ask Excel, uh, is the dart in a circle? And the way we can do that, we can say equals if this is less than or equal to 1. We'll say 1 is in the circle, 0 is out of the circle. So every time I see a 1, I know it's in the circle. The dart fell in the circle. If I see a 0, it fell out in the corner somewhere. So this was 0 0.65, 0 0.9, so it was down in this, down here somewhere outside the circle. All right, so how do we know we did that right? We can do this. We can we can say, uh, we can go here, equals if this is a 1. Well, that's within the circle, so we go equals 1. It's within the circle, so I'll go ahead and graph that one where it belongs. Okay? If it's not in the circle, I'm just going to put it right in the center. So, so I will have a bunch of them in the center, right? So this is my x coordinate if it's within the circle, right? So if it's also, if it's if this is one, that means it's out of the circle. So I'm going to put it at zero, zero, right in the center. Let me do the same thing for the y coordinate. I'm going to say equals if this equals one. Then I'm going to say uh, uh, if it's equal to one, then I'm going to go ahead and plot the y coordinate. 
If not, I'm just going to go ahead and plot it at zero. And now we can graph this again. Let me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it. Now let's paste it down here below. And if I, don't, if I, if I click on these points, you can see they're here. So I'm just going to drag these over here to this one. Now you can see, now I'm saying, okay, no, so, so I got that correct, right? Now I'm showing the dots in the circle here. Now remember, every time there's a zero, there's a bunch of dots right here in the middle at zero, right? Because all of these times, but that doesn't really matter. I just want to graph it, right? So I'm just graphing, I'm showing this is all the coordinates of the dots in the circle. So let's go ahead and, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's, uh, let's do this. I'm going to put this right here. So let's do some counts. First of all, let's go ahead. How many total darts are there? So I'm going to go equals count. And I'm going to say, I'm just going to count all of these. So we knew that we did 10,000, right? We did 10,000 throws because that's what this was here. We did it 10,000 times. And then the darts in the circle, I'm going to go count equals count if. I'm going to go ahead and just count the same area. And I want to say count if, well, remember if it's in the circle, I want to count if there's a one there. So, so I threw it 10,000 times, 7,848 fell within the circle or on the line. So my estimate is going to be equal to, remember it's going to be equal to four times the area of the circle. The area of the circle was estimated by this and the area of the square was estimated by this. So I'm just doing four times area of the circle divided by area of square. So that's my, that's my estimate. Actual pi is equal to pi. So my error, my error is equal to this minus this. And we can take this out. Well, that's, that's probably good. So this is larger than this. So that's a positive error. So every time I hit F9, it's going to estimate it a little bit different. Okay, so uh, we zoom out a little bit. Every time I hit F9, it recalculates pi. So sometimes we get lucky, we get more accurate. So there's pretty accurate, right? 3.1424. The actual is that, right? And we're calculating, since we only have 10,000 throws we can only the most we can calculate is there after that's all zeros right so of course if I want to get more accurate I would do more throws right I, I could make this possibly a million right if I made this a million then uh, this Excel might start taking longer right because then it's going to be doing more calculations so the longer you the more throws you do it take it's going to start taxing Excel a little bit but anyway that's that's how you would do it uh, hopefully that kind of made sense Monte Carlo method is all these very, very, uh, very powerful. And a lot of times we use it in finance to simulate things using historical data. We might find like the standard deviation or the uh, mean. Now remember, whenever you're doing standard deviation, you're not going to use this array because this is a this is what's called the uniform distribution, and you'd have to use what's called a, a normal distribution, right? So this is going to be just a bunch of if I would. If I like, if I take one of these, if I take one of these and I do a histogram of its distribution, how, how these numbers are distributed, shift in down, and let me go up here. If I do a histogram on them, I go insert uh, histogram. You can see that they're distributed uniformly across all the way from one all the way up to one, fairly uniformly distributed. So that wouldn't work for if we're doing finance because. We want them to be uh, normally distributed. And there's a way to do that, but I'm not going to get into that in this in this uh, in this uh, uh, video. So anyway, if you like the video, my picture will come up here, and if you click on my picture, it'll allow you to subscribe, hit like if you like it, make any comments. Hopefully, that was interesting to you. Thank you. Bye.